Recently, This is America in the World visited the Republic of Haiti. We wanted to look beyond the headlines and experience Haiti for ourselves. So, with a local Haitian camera crew, we set out to explore the country's rich culture and very real challenges, and we discovered a truly beautiful country with warm, welcoming people. On this program, we'll explore the many historic influences, rich culture, and natural beauty of Haiti. Haitian voodoo, magnificent historic sites, and incredibly creative art are all part of the exciting cultural tapestry of Haiti. This is America and the World is brought to you by Whittle School and Studios, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President, the League of Arab States, the Rotondaro Family Trust, Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Haiti will surprise just about everyone not familiar with the country, and it just might be a new destination for your consideration. I spoke with Haiti's Minister of Tourism about the country's new tourism outreach over coffee in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Tourism is the most important thing for us right now because I've convinced the president and told him that tourism should be the mother of development for Haiti. 79 countries of the world have their 10% of their GDPs that are based on tourism. So why doesn't Haiti doing that, doing the same thing? Because Haiti has so much potentials and we can offer so many things to the world. How does the Minister of Tourism mm -hmm. go about trying to put Haiti on the map as a tourist destination? Well, that's one thing that we're fighting for since last year. Last year, actually, I launched a campaign that says that for tourists is for tout monde. It says in English, it's a Creole thing, uh -huh. <laughs> but in, in English it says tourism is everybody's business. So then people could understand because in our mind, in our mentality, tourists, tourists, it's only foreigners that come. We don't know because tourism, first of all, refers to leisure, pleasure, and what you can have. And then Haitians, we're not used to that actually. We always think that people that come that foreigners can come to your country and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. But now we, it's, we have to change it and then to make, un, to make everybody know and then teach all the Haitians that they should be the first tourists in Haiti first. Ah, that's a very interesting way of going about it. Yes. What do you say is at the heart of the Haitian culture? Our voodoo. Voodoo? Yes. Tell me. Because people, <laughs> sometimes they hear voodoo, they may have maybe a, a negative reaction. Tell me, tell me the <laughs> belief system and how it works. Well, actually I have to tell you the truth. They say like 60 or 70% of all Asians are Catholics. The rest of them are uh, Protestants. Yes. And then 100% are Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> because Voodoo is part of what we are. For the, for the independence, the, our ancestors, when they fought for liberty, they fought to have the nation, the first black republic nation of the world. All they had was voodoo. All they had was the laws that they, that they, that they called. And then everything that we do, even in art mm -hmm. and craft, yes. everything that we do, part of it has something to do with voodoo. Uh, we find the people uh, warm, friendly, hospitable, great sense of humor. Definitely. Uh, this is what keeps us alive. I think so. How so? Okay, tell me more. <laughs> Help me understand. My daughter once told me that, Mommy, I would have been miserable if I was not Haitian. Yes, she told me that. Say that? Yes, she would have been miserable if she was not Haitian. Explain that. Because she says that we make fun out of everything. I think that this is what makes us be, the, be Haitians. I think so. Because we have a way to see life, uh -huh. which is totally different 
from the rest of the, the world, I can see that. Because even um, when you go around and then when you see people, they don't have much, mm -hmm. but all they have is their mind, their spirit, and then their way to go, their way to understand life. And then, so this is what makes us a great nation also. And whenever you smile to someone, they will smile back, back at you. Yeah. Because they have nothing, they have nothing to be, to be, they have no anger, actually. Even when they are in pain, they are in misery, they have no anger because they love life. They love their country. They love what they see. They love to be alive. This is, this is the mentality, I think. So, Minister, some folks are coming for a weekend and the question in the back of their minds mm -hmm. is, is Haiti safe? Haiti was ranked by Global Peace Index in 2017 as the safest place in the Caribbean. What a badge of honor that is, Yes, huh? it is. It safest is. place in the, in the Caribbean. Caribbean. Terrific. We were, we were before Cuba, before Jamaica, before Dominican Republic, before everyone. <laughs> well, congratulations so, thank on that. Thank you very much. Thank, <laughs> thank you very you. much. <laughs> thank you, Minister. Okay. Thank you. In northern Haiti, the Citadel is a powerful landmark and symbol of independence for all Haitians. There are many forts throughout the country. However, at an elevation of 3,000 feet, the size and structure of the Citadel is unforgettable and the views are once in a lifetime. We traveled by ATV and horse up the mountain to the fortress where our tour guide Maurice offered a heartfelt lesson in the rich history of Haiti. Why were the French so interested in having a base here in Haiti? So when you talk about Haiti, uh, before independence, it was Saint-Domingue. So Saint-Domingue means Haiti before independence. Mm -hmm. So it was the richest French colony ever. So the French would get everything they wanted, like coffee, cocoa beans, sugar cane. So they would do anything to take it back from the Asians, if, even after the independence. Mm. So that means it was very rich. And that's why the Asians built the citadel to fight against the French just in case. 1804 was the peak of the revolution because they started fighting way before 1804. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go back to 1791, which was a very big uh, ceremony, you know, to motivate the slaves to tell them, hey guys, you have to wake up, you are not born to be slaves. So something must be done about it. And, and yes, they kept fighting and fighting. And the last battle took place at Cape Asian against the French, which was what we call in Asian history, La Bataille de Vertier, the Battle of Vertier, when the French army was defeated. And a few months later, the Haitians proclaimed their independence in 1804. So independence is declared, and the citadel, uh, the starting, the building of the citadel to prevent the French from coming back, from returning. How many years did it take to build the citadel, uh, and how many workers might have been involved? So we do know that uh, it took the king 15 years from 1805 to the time he died, in 1820, but we cannot tell you how many people are working in the citadel because this will never mention a specific number. But what we do know, everybody wanted to be to be part of the work going on here because Christoph told them, you have two choices, guys. Either you help me to build the citadel, in this case you're going to be free for the rest of your life. Or if you don't, the French will come back, you go back to slavery. They say, okay, let's build it. Mm -hmm. So that's why people come from all over the place to be part of this. The French did not come back, no. And uh, another reason for which the citadel was built was, I would say three reasons. Uh -huh. One, to fight against of the French. Since the country was divided, it was also built to fight against the South. Uh -huh. And the third reason was to show the world that Haiti do things, big and beautiful things, just like the Europeans. Below the citadel, at the bottom of the mountain, are the ruins of a complex of government buildings and palace built by and for the first king of Haiti, Henry Christophe, also known as Henry I. 
Cyril Pressois is the founder of Tour Haiti, which specializes in personal and private group tours. Born and raised in Haiti, he was the perfect guide for our visit to the Cape Haitian area. Let's talk about uh, this particular spot that we're in right now. Is it uh, San Susi? San Susi. San Susi. Oh, you, to see your pronunciation is so beautiful. Does uh, does that translate? And what's going on here? Yeah, Sans this is a ruin of spectacular proportions. So San Susi literally means without worries or care carefree, um, and it was San Susi was a complex built by one of uh, uh, Haiti's revolutionary leaders, Henri Christophe who was also the second head of state of Haiti. Mm -hmm. And he built this as a, uh, an administrative capital of his kingdom. And uh, it was destroyed, it's in ruins today, because it was destroyed by an earthquake mm. in 1842. But it keeps this majestic aura to it. So as Christophe was also building the citadel up the mountain, this was built. So this was built really at the same time. and. Uh, Roughly, it took about 10 years to be built, Whoa. or even less. And this was a palace, huh? This was a complex. So a this complex, was, a complex. It, it was really the, the capital city, the, the administrative center of Christophe's, uh -huh. the kingdom of Haiti under the, the rule of Christophe. And uh, where we're standing exactly was indeed the palace. That was the, the royal residence. And it's something that Christophe built, um, first of all, to be efficient, to serve a purpose. I mean, you have, you had government offices, you had a university here, you had a mint, you had all of this. But at the same time, he built it to be majestic. He built it to be beautiful. Did he build it also to send a message? I think, I think there, were, there was a very important message uh -huh. for two different publics. Uh -huh. First of all, as a, as a nation of slave that had risen, and, and decided we're now going to be independent and we will have no other masters than ourselves. Uh, he sent a message to the former, uh, the former colonial masters is that whatever you guys can build, we can build just as well. But I think there was an even more important message. And that message needs saying still today. It's a message to the Haitian people themselves. And it's a message to the Haitian people saying, we can do whatever we set our mind to do. We can accomplish anything. According to many Haitians, voodoo is at the core of Haitian culture. I spoke with a voodoo priest who is the general director of Haiti's National Bureau of Ethnology, where he's curating a voodoo museum. During our visit, he joined in on a rehearsal for an upcoming event of traditional voodoo music and dance. Tell me a little bit about the different countries that have come together to be part of Haiti. First of all, we have to know before the independence when that contingent from Africa came to Haiti, to Saint-Domingue at this time, Saint-Domingue, and they brought different tribes from Benin, Ivory Coast, uh, Nigeria, Niger, and each of them have their own language. Come to the new world, who's going to become again Haiti, mix with those Amerindian who share with them, with the African, their knowledge, their, what they say in Creole, Vodou, connaissance. When they share that connaissance, that knowledge, that knowledge, they put them together. It was like after the genocide of those Amerindians, but most of them, like part of them, were in the mountain to share their connaissance, their knowledge with those Africans. Also, the colonizer, they call on the French colonism. Bring also brought their language, they brought their culture, they brought their dance, their way of life. And those slaves, those people, those at this time, those Creole, put those culture together to create a nation. To say now we have to to have that freedom, we're supposed to, have to become one person, one nation with one language. What's at the heart of the culture of Haiti? <laughs> the heart of culture of Haiti? Our heart is voodoo. Voodoo as a way of life, a religion, which is that way of life will give us freedom, 
that independence. How does that play out in daily life? It's life, but we have respect for nature, for environment, our respect for the ancient, the elders, the respect for youth, the respect for women. Vodou show us from the beginning how human beings is the same. It's not about colors. And Vodou, we don't care about the colors of the skin. We care about the color of your heart, of your soul. For example, if we take an example about our singers, of music, of dance, everybody, the way, the way I speak, because Vodou is more than religion, is a way of life. And our way of life, we are uh, the, the daily life, we're cooking, we're crying, you're happy, we enjoy, but this, our spirituality, our resilience is always there. Art is essential to life in Haiti and can be seen just about anywhere. We visited a variety of galleries during our time in Haiti and were absolutely awed by the varied styles, creativity, and especially mediums of expression. I spoke with two highly regarded gallery owners. To understand a society, you cannot avoid art and culture. At the heart of Haitian culture is Haitian sensitivity. It's a peculiar sensitivity that gives each and every Haitian a certain potential, a potential and a certain boldness that translated by I can. And this I can has given us schools of artists, such as the School of Cape Haitian, such as um, Noai with uh, the metal sculptures, cut metal sculptures, such as Grand Rue, and uh, generations of artists because of that I can. After the fall of this 30-year dictatorship in 1986, there was like a new light, a new opening. New freedom? New freedom. <laughs> Expressed in the art we see here? Oui, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Is there a single word that you can put on the movement? Energy. Energy, Energy and force of life. Madame. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci. If you take a piece of sculpture, uh, a painting, uh, maybe even some jewelry, uh, are there common themes or is there a common denominator uh, in the work of uh, Haitian art and, Haitian, and by Haitian artists? Definitely our history. Definitely our history, you know, our culture, which I believe all kind of is, comes, trickles down from the religion, our religion, which is so specific and unique to Haiti, voodoo. So through the art, that's what's so interesting with, uh, with art, through all the me different mediums, the sculptures and paintings and even fashion now, is it's sort of bringing, it's, it's taking out, it's demystifying, mm -hmm. if you'd like, this, this, the, this sort of heaviness associated with voodoo. And, and through the artists and through the art, they're, they're, we're sort of, we're, now beginning to openly talk about it publicly and be and be less afraid of it and more proud of it one of the the things that we should definitely focus on as as a nation as a group is 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 to start loving each other um, more and you know appreciating our differences and, and trying to really find uh, an identity that we can all relate to at all the different, you know, stages of, you know, life. Els Rili is, is one of the main spirits in our voodoo tradition that um, is um, worshipped. And it's a very positive um, spirit, you know, to, to try and really get us together and, and, you know, for us to move forward as, as, as a nation. Haiti's food and drink say much about the Haitian culture. I spoke with the young chef and watched some of his students prepare a meal of traditional Haitian food. 
And we also visited a world-famous Haitian rum company that's been around since 1862. The rum-making process is absolutely fascinating. Every place we go, people are talking about the Haitian food, the culture of food here. Talk a little bit about that. So in Haiti, we have some beautiful, beautiful vegetables, and we have very, very beautiful spices too. So as you know, in Haiti, so our gastronomy is very, very, very extraordinary because when people come to Haiti, so they are very happy to eat our food, um, our griot, um, renational, so poisson gosset. So we have a, a, a very quantity of food that we prepare, and we are the best. We are the best. I know that we have French cooking, so we have Spanish cooking, a lot of country, but I think Haiti is the best. Because when, when people come to Haiti, they taste our food, they say, oh my God, oh, Haiti is very, very beautiful. Our food is very, very, very good. For today, we prepare Re National, okay? We prepare aussi griot, and then we prepare um, a sauce timalis, okay? And then we prepare banane pesé, yeah? And then we have salad with a dressing with cherries. Okay, Asian cherries. Tell me a little bit about the school that trains uh, young people to work in the kitchen. Yeah, so we have... Um, what is the year, name of the school? Ecole Hotelier d'Haïti. So we have Ecole Hotelier d'Haïti. So the school, so we have young people and then we have adults too, okay? So the young people, they are very, very amazing. They love cooking, okay? They make cooking like a passion. They, they do everything with passion. So that, that's what we need in Haiti and in the gastronomy. So we need, when the students cook, okay, they have to do it with passion. I'm Vladimir Dudelva. I'm the chief operating officer of uh, Wamba Bancourt. And uh, so I'll tell you a little bit of our, of our operations. Why is the company uh, so important? Well, first of all, it's one of the oldest companies in the, in the country. It's over 150 years old. It's a uh, it's fifth generation run. Uh, we use a lot of sugar cane that comes from the farmers. So we, we give a lot of, uh, of a lot of work because it's manually cut and grown in the area that, we, that we're working in. So we have about uh, every day close to 300 tons of sugar cane that comes into the plant. It go, comes in, it has to be milled and then it goes to the uh, fermentation process where, alcohol, where the juice, the sugarcane juice gets converted into alcohol and then goes to the distillation process where alcohol is separated from the juice and then it goes into aging. After it's spent all the years that, that like we saw in the, in the vats, in the wooden vats, it goes to the bottling plant where it's a bottle, it's cased and then sent out to the different parts of the world or the country. We have about nine to 10 warehouses of aging warehouses and nothing moves but, but the liquid. So the master blender goes around with his truck, knowing what is what and where did it go in. Uh, he has a bunch of uh, webs of pipes. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. He has it all down with uh, valves that he knows what is being sent where. So it gets in there, aged, and then sent to the bottling plant. And nothing moves but the liquid. Yep. So I can tell by the smile on your face, <laughs> you're very uh, passionate about it. Yes. and very proud of absolutely, it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this has been a wonderful visit. Thanks for coming. Thank Appreciate you it. so Thank much. You. This was just yes. a great education. Uh, I'm glad that you had a great time. Thank you so awesome. much. Eh bien, ça, ça qui est très important, on a dit un grand merci parce que en vérité, bon, des journalistes en plus l'autre monde projeter des images comme ce qui pas bon. Et nous disons merci pour l'effort qu'on fait pour nous, la plus bon pour nous toujours, que nous même tout n'avons essayé faire plus mieux, bien plus sur nous, bien plus en face pour nous accueillir étranger, en façon pour travailler avec marcher plus bien. And we are very grateful to you for being here, and we have to say thank you for that because most of the time only the negative side of Haiti is shown and on TV, things like that. So we have to say thank you and we wish you good luck with your project. Merci.
Special thanks for the warm hospitality of the Marriott Port-au-Prince Hotel. For information about This is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by... Whittle School and Studios. The U.S. China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States. The Rotondaro Family Trust. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.